kicking off a little college football. It is that time of year again. Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Christmas Day matchup. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be our visitors taking on our home team. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And leading them out, their signal caller. Now it is fourth season in the NFL. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. They may have thrown the interception, obviously less than ideal, but I think they also sent a message that they're going to push the ball downfield in this one. Yeah, not afraid to take their shots right away, huh? What was that, like a 9-9-9 route? Nine meaning go? Just went ahead and went for it. Didn't work out so well because it certainly appeared the defense was prepared, but I'm with you. Okay, so it didn't work this time. Doesn't mean we won't try it again later. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their second-year quarterback. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, 
I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Second and seven. They'll keep it on the ground. Baxter and able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Now they need two. Here's third down. They'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. Well, only their first drive, Charles, but they talked to us about needing to convert on third down, in particular not letting third and short opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, they were successful right there. It also tells you that they're successful on first and second down as well to get to third and manageable and make them able to pick up those first downs. Now here we are, first and goal. They've got to like what they're doing on this drive. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Now here's a run for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Sanders got it for a New England touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And his guys have taken a first quarter lead. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, he might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Extra point right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. Now remember the last time out, they threw the interception. That led to the touchdown, so now time to regroup. It certainly is, and they're going... Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Well, they're certainly not giving much up to their defense, are they? Because for the second time now, that D has had to run back out on the field early after an interception. And remember, on the last drive, the opposing side took it in for six after that interception. Back onto the field comes this off.
clock down to two, and we get a signal and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. They'll throw out wide, complete to Sanders. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Here's second and seven. Now a handoff up the middle. Baxter. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. Here now, third and a yard. He'll drop to throw. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead. Did my eyes deceive me, or was that an eye formation play that was just run there for a touchdown? A little old-school eye. How about that? Was that a fullback, tailback, running it into the end zone? Well, that's what that fullback's for, right? That's why you use that. Let him pave the way. Oh, without a doubt. He's an extra blocker, and he did his job well on that play. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now 14 to nothing. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. He's piloted two drives so far, and unfortunately not very well piloted. Both led to interceptions. Now they're facing the deficit. Another touchdown after the previous pick. Starting over here, first and 10. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try to hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that'll move the ball downfield. And on now is the punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. New England trying to get a place on offense. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. Yeah, they're almost pushing to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just now supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Defense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. 
The result only four yards there on the play. And now we've got a third and three. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there. Didn't we? Important to you, especially early in the game like they have. That one good for 13 and a New England first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive come through with another one here and they have them staring at a third and long and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense they'll come up now with a clock showing three seconds to go here in the first now a throw here hauled in and he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter back with charles davis i'm brandon gordon the offense already on the field here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and 10. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it's second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. You know you play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4. There's three guys up front, the nose tackle, the guys they call the defensive ends. They're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're going to just run in here. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. I know I'm an old defender, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. That was smart play calling right there on third and four. They didn't need to do too much. Just let their guy get out there and sit down in the zone. And they hit him for the completion for the first down. On first down, Baxter. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football off a triple option, you've actually called that play. Second down and eight. They'll drop to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown. From eight yards out. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 21 to nothing. Visitors 21, our home team. Let's focus in on what we got to do here. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. 
From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here, that's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. And he's got Rome. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. In trouble, and he's taken down. It looks like a 12-yard loss there on the first down sack. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. I don't think anyone thought we'd see a run facing second and that long. And that element of surprise, I think, helped make that play so successful. Nice effort on that carry. And it took what seemed like second and impossible. Now has him within throwing range of a first down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices. As and now off to the races, down the right side. And Touchdown. A great effort there. 40 yards. And his guys are able to close that gap just a bit. Well, we've said it many times. He is always a threat to go the distance anytime he's got the ball in his hands. And on this occasion, he did just that. Well, he's definitely the guy that makes this offense go. And when you're an RB1 running back one, you've got to be willing to be patient at times as well. Not every run's going to be the home run run we saw there. But once you get that opportunity and that opening, you take full advantage. Extra point right down the middle. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. New England's offense set to go. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline, you know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Here's a screen for Robinson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 
A nice pickup of 10 means that this drive will stay on track. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They're going to look to throw. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now a second and 10. They'll look to throw again. Throwing in a traffic there, and that's complete. They'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here comes third down at seven. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he can't escape, and down he goes. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fielded at the 20. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And they will take over first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Second and three. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw here. Looking deep downfield. It's caught inside the 25. And he's going to be out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. A big play there just before halftime. And even 40 yards. Uh, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there, that shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. And he's got it. Touchdown. From 21 yards away. And his guys are able to make this a close game again. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Now the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. Just a four-play drive that time. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away.
And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. One more go for this offense in the first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Zoom action here in quarter number three. Oh, a good return up past the 30. Still going. One man to beat. And he will score. Touchdown. And you've used the phrase with me before, pressing the kicking game. What exactly does that mean? Because they did it there. It means focusing on it, all aspects of it, because it's the third part of the game, offense, defense, special teams. If you press the kicking game, create an advantage, make a big play, it often leads to victory. Now for the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. This taken in right around the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And they start the second half with Johnson. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. It'll be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards there at a first down. But he certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. Second and ten. 
They'll set up a throw. And he comes back with one complete. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. Well, this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So they bring out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now this one complete on the slant route. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards as the quick slam keeps the drive moving. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. So they'll get nothing out of that play at its second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 19 yards to pick up there and move the chains. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Back to throw here. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Third quarter action here on Christmas Day. Hope everyone's having a blessed holiday season. Second and ten right now. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, a flat-out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Now the throw on third down. Knocked away and incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. They begin the drive with Johnson. This one across the 45 before he's brought down. 
90 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. And they'll send out their punter now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. As they, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you can take the spirit away from another team. That their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Second down, eight to go from the 28. Now back to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. He's got his target. That's complete. Down the sideline he goes. And all the way in. Touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the night. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Back now here on EA Sports as we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. 
The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. They're up against a third and one situation. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. A well-executed 22-yard game. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. Taking it in from a yard out. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. Extra point attempt here still to come. And that'll increase their lead to 28. Scoring summary. Three-play drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And able to get this out to the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They forced incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Looking to throw. Yeah, it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays harder to move it. The fourth down pass play doesn't work out. And that will force a turnover on downs. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, 
if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> well, pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. And certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary a clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Now the try here for the pulling after. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it ends with a New England touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Avoiding the tackle, Bernard. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And last time, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. We'll see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go-around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Now, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp, and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit better. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll make it second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan, and especially the execution. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. 16 yards of first down. Well, I mean, look, obviously there's no 20 or 30 point play in that playbook, but they can try to end things here on a positive note despite trailing big, and that looks like what they're trying to do here by pushing the ball downfield. Well, let me go with the heavy cliche then, partner. Just control what you can control right now, and all they can control here is how their final plays develop. This already looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Here's second and ten. Back to throw again. And he comes back with one complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. His pass caught at the four. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Ten more there and another first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll look to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodge two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And the ball will go over on the goal line stand. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. So celebration down on the field for a good, hard-fought victory here. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second-half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. 
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. So long, everybody.